Well, hello, and um, I hope everybody is doing well as they possibly can in these unusual times of coronavirus lockdown and uh, having to stay at home and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, I thought I'd do a bit of an update on where I am with my Mitsubishi Outlander and the battery degradation issue, which um, uh, is not going away and will not go away ever. Um, because it's the nature of the beast, unfortunately. It's the way it's designed. I can't quite remember, uh, in fact I should have checked my last video, um, when I, I, I last did an update. I think it was around October time. Um, so, um, so, uh, so that would have been, let's bring this down a bit. So around here, possibly the 3rd of October or 19th, something like that. So it's been a while. Um, but just as a refresh, this is the, the record that I keep, um, which records the degradation using the PHEV wa uh, watchdog application, um, using an OBD2 device uh, and Bluetooth on an Android phone. Um, so if you've not used that before, um, go check it out, go onto the PHEV watchdog application. Uh, website and it tells you exactly what you need to do and uh, what type of OBD2 um, connector to get. Um, but that aside, that's how I get all my information from the app, uh, which by the way is accurate because if you take your car into Mitsubishi and plug it in, it will show exactly the same um, numbers on their machine, their MUT3 device as it would do on PHEV Watchdog, so it's exactly what the car is showing and what the car is thinking, or believes to be the case, because I don't believe that the battery degradation is actually accurate. But unfortunately, if the software says it's accurate, accurate then it's going to believe that the battery is of less capacity than it actually is. That said, let's do a bit of a recap. Back in 14th of June, Last year, 2019, I had a uh, a reset procedure performed by Mitsubishi, which bumped up the uh, the well the uh, capacity of the battery from 34.2 amp hours to 38.9, and that was 90% health, and it brought it up to 102.4% health. Which I'm, I think is because um, the actual capacity of the battery is 40 amp hours, but there's a, a buffer at the top, and uh, to a degree at the below, uh, below at the bottom of the capacity, uh, which is designed to prevent over undercharging and reducing the the battery life. So that's where we were back on the 14th of June, and since then we've had all of this degradation on a pretty regular basis you can see round about the lockdown over the last three months I haven't done much because I've not been out in the car not been using it a great deal um, so but that's not stopped the degradation happening um, if we look at the end column this com column is the number of days between losses and this one is the number of miles dri driven between losses so you can see, I haven't done a huge mileage in the last few months. Um, four, five, six, seven, about 900 miles, I suppose. Um, more than I thought, to be honest. But um, you can see that between the degradation drops on this, this column, that's the number of days between each drop. Um, and we're getting some fairly consistent 0.1 amp hour drops which is pretty typical you get the odd half an amp hour drop there and there which obviously is huge on its own but for the most part it's 0.1 and I don't know what there was a, a period yeah around about February where I had all sorts of losses going on and I just do not know why um, and you can see here I had a loss uh, in the space of one day uh, so I had a loss of 0.1 and then the next day 0.5, so I lost 0.6 in a matter of 48 hours. Why? I don't know. I don't know. So what's the score at the moment? Well, back in June last year, the battery capacity, as I said, was 38.9 amp hours. 
we remove this lot we're now uh, we've now got down to 35.6 amp hours so that is a drop of 3.3 um, if we look at percentage it goes from <coughs> excuse me 102 down to 93.7 and that is an 8.7 percent loss in about a year since the 14th of June to the 5th of June just short of a year so you know that that is that is a big drop in my view eight percent um having said that is it I don't know for the type of battery that we're talking about um it's only 12 um uh 12 amp hours um sorry 12 kilowatt and it's dragging around <coughs> a very heavy car. Um, now, what am I getting in terms of um, range? Well, this is interesting because when I first got the car back in December 2018, I was probably, no, I was on 96.1% health, but that was before this this reset procedure was done so I was 96.1 percent I reckon I was getting about 25 26 miles pretty regularly and I was and I, I do drive my car like Miss Daisy I don't floor it it's not a performance vehicle it's not supposed to be a performance vehicle um, I do smooth accelerations don't don't floor it, no, you know, unless there's a, a need to if you're trying to get out of a tight spot. But other than that, it's driven very gently. Um, so I don't give it a hard time. Um, we therefore started at 96% there. Um, and we're at 93.7 today. I'm still guessing 25 miles range um, if I drive it sensibly. In fact, um, I did a very early morning drive the other day. We're in lockdown, therefore the roads are very quiet. Therefore, you haven't got the constant stop, start, accelerate, decelerate that you that you would normally have on normal busy roads, which is in this part of the world um, where I am, as with many of you, um, you live in a busy town and uh, the roads are pretty, um, uh, sorry, this is shaking, uh, a pretty pretty well stocked up with vehicles so an early morning drive when the roads are absolutely clear um, steady acceleration seven miles um, of dual carriageway at 70 mark excuse me 60 miles an hour um, and actually probably more than that well yes seven miles of it would have been at 60 miles an hour about five miles of it at 50 miles an hour um, and in total, I did a solid 25, in fact, it was just shy of 26 miles. So even with the 8% loss, and we're recording a degree that were a battery health of 93.7, um, but that is over the space of a year. If I haven't had that procedure done, I don't know what it would be now. I mean, it, it before the procedure, it was down to exactly 90%. So that would mean um, I would actually uh, be, well, um, getting on for 80%, 82.3%. So what the range would be then, I don't know. So I, f I, I would assume that this time next year, I would be at about 82%. Um, and I will be having, I will have this car at uh, this time next year, I'm quite sure of that. 82%, um, uh, it will be very interesting to see what the range is because I still find the whole thing quite odd. Because a lot of the, when it comes to range, which obviously people look at and that's how they judge whether their battery is any good or not, you can't because the range on the on the computer screen in the car is utterly 
utterly unreliable. If you want to test the range of your car in the way that you normally do, just zeroize the trip meter after a full charge and go and drive it until the engine kicks in. That that is the best way of doing it. But you also want to do it over a period of time in different conditions, um, heavy traffic, light traffic, um, and so on and so forth, because the difference will be phenomenal. Um, so all in all, I reckon, let's say I was down to 80%, I, I would still be getting 20 miles range, which I'm ha I would be pretty much happy with, given that this is not a full EV by any stretch. Um, but it can be a 100% EV for at least 20 miles, and if your commute is less than 20 miles a day, um, then you'll never be on petrol, or very rarely. Um, if your commute was 40 miles a day, then your petrol costs would be halved, uh, and you'd be talking about uh, a, a one pound's worth of electricity on top of that. So either way, unless you're doing huge motorway mileage every week, then this isn't your. This is not a car for you by any stretch, in my view. Um, but uh, other than that, then even with the battery degradation going down to about 80 odd percent, you've still got a pretty good range on the battery. It would be my opinion. But there we go. Um, still pretty unhappy with the degradation. I don't think that the software needs to degrade it to that degree. I think it's stupid. Um, I do not believe that these batteries are dying left, right and centre. Um, at, the, at this rate, as I say, if I hadn't had that 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 um, procedure done uh, last year, then I'd be in a, a pretty shoddy position. I got that done under warranty after um, complaining to Mitsubishi UK, and they did that under warranty. Whether they will do that again, I don't know. Probably not. Um, but there you have it. So I hope you found this interesting. I'll just sort of go through the uh, figures again for you here, so you can pause the video um, to have a look at the numbers um, and perhaps look for some patterns um, you know I, I don't know if there's any patterns of any great uh, great significance uh, I think the miles be driven between losses is interesting where I've got a big mileage that's when I went away for a week um, and over that period of time we only got 0.1 losses so that's over a thousand miles and yet you, you can get a 0.1 loss after 155 miles um, you know get one after 20 miles you know I, I don't know I just don't understand the logic of the software and I'm assuming that because I don't understand the logic of the software then it has no logic uh, well, that's what I believe anyway. It's stupid. Obviously, it's got a logic, but I think it's flawed. Hope you found that interesting. Um, still a great car. Fantastic car. Absolutely love it. Um, my next car will be 100% EV. I'm quite sure of that, but that's going to be a way off because that's money, and I've spent enough money on this car, buying this car as it is, so I need to get money's worth out of that first. But um, in the meantime, if you're thinking of buying a PHEV, just ask the dealer if they know what the state of health of the battery is if it's depending on how old if it's three years old and it's 85 percent great go for it but if it's you know any battery below 70 percent or even 75 percent i don't think i'd touch it uh would be my advice such as it is <clears throat> but you live and learn in this world isn't it when i bought my phev i didn't understand any of this stuff didn't realise about the battery degradation and the issues that it may have. Um, if I was doing it now, I would certainly want to get a solid figure on the state of health of the battery. Anyway, there we go. Banged on for about a quarter of an hour now, and I'm sure you're bored. So uh, I will catch you again. I will be doing other videos on electric kits, electronic kits. Um, I should have said that at the start, but never mind. Um, things are a bit crazy at the moment for everybody so I my routine is all to hell and my working routine is all to hell and I'm sure it is for many of you but um, hopefully we'll get out of this madness in the next few months so 
in the meantime stay safe and thanks for watching i'll be back on as soon as i can cheers for now